Hello everybody, long time no see, I've been doing stuff. Um, so, a couple of weeks ago, or maybe even like a month ago or something, yeah, it was just after Christmas when uh, done with the advent of code and stuff, I sat down and I recorded a video and um, tried to figure out what uh, what uh, to do next, you know, in, in my rising... <laughs> thing you know and in the video production stuff and I came to a conclusion that I would really like to do three major things uh, like updates or fixing things or yeah let, let me tell you those three things one was that this extension here vb4c which I have been using for a long time I made videos in the past uh, click on the link in the video. <laughs> maybe I maybe I do that. I never done it, but whatever. Uh, VB4C. It's uh, one of these yeah Vim bindings for Chrome. You can watch those videos or don't because it's uh, it's actually a very bad extension. It doesn't work properly. Sometimes it actually doesn't work at all, and it's it's like a, a critical e extension that you kind of want to uh, work all the time. It's uh, it's extremely annoying when it stops working or when it's it's not working properly and this didn't work properly at the same time it's uh, this this extension and and uh, the hack i've uh, i have done to it uh, which lets me um, uh, execute or it lets me send links uh, in the web browser to an external uh, program for example a url handler and then i can write like bash scripts to do stuff with an with a url for example I can send it a URL to an image file and then it will automatically set that as my wallpaper or it can be an mp3 file and then it will automatically set uh, or save that mp3 file and stuff like you, you can do so much things when you can do that. And VB4C has been the only way I have uh, figured out how to do that in a Chromium based browser which uh, this Vivaldi browser is you know. Uh, I used to be able to do it on Pale Moon, and I can still do it on Pale Moon uh, with a pentadactyl extension. But on Chrome, it's it's much more tricky to get this working. So I kept on using this, but it was like it felt like it was also getting worse and worse. Like more bugs uh, appeared, both me finding uh, new things I didn't even know those issues exi existed, and they have always existed in in VB4C. Uh, but also due to updates in, in Chrome uh, making it just more unstable because it's it's basically unmaintained, uh, this uh, extension. So that was one thing that I felt I really have to fix this. and I've, it, it felt like I was the only one. <laughs> I, maybe I even is the only one uh, who is doing this, you, you know, re have a workflow that relies on, on VB4C. I don't think it have any users anymore because it's... It's so weird, uh, but I felt it would be nice to to fix this extension, and I started investigating how to create uh, uh, your own extensions, uh, and um, yeah, to do it properly, you know, because uh, I thought it's probably best to just rewrite this whole thing uh, from scratch. Maybe if I enable this here, we can maybe open just so something happens <laughs> in the video uh, but this this video might be like uh, almost podcast like so but I, th I think I have some interesting things to say uh, mm, whatever Let, let's keep on with the story uh, so vb4c it's an extension only for chrome uh, or chromium based browsers that is uh, all uh, extensions like these web extensions they are called are uh, written with a um, uh, uh, web stack you know um, javascript css html uh, and i actually don't like uh, and they are very heavy javascript as you can see this is a 80 87% uh, JavaScript in this repository and it's a lot of JavaScript a lot <laughs> and this particular extension uh, vb4c is a fork of this cvim extension uh, and the code base is quite old uh, and JavaScript have uh, 
gotten some uh, I, I don't know maybe improvements I, I don't know it uh, but a lot of things have changed in JavaScript and stuff like that so you can write smarter code maybe I don't know it's not modern uh, and JavaScript is not like uh, uh, shell scripting where it's it's like it's really good to write POSIX you know it's nothing wrong with writing uh, a shell script uh, like you did in the 70s even you know uh, with JavaScript you don't want to write <laughs> 10 year old standards JavaScript not following the standards really you, I, I don't know you don't want to write JavaScript at all that's that's kind of what I want, want to say here because I really didn't want to do this. Uh, at the same time, I really wanted to do it. I really wanted to get the functionality back, you know, and, and working properly. Uh, but every time I open open this project, uh, started hacking on it, I, I just, no, you, you have to start over. There, there's no, I cannot polish, polish this uh, uh, thing here. Uh, so then I dug a bit uh, further, or not super far, you know, uh, but I, I stumbled upon this thing uh, called manifest version 3. And this is this is important uh, stuff actually, or important, but it, it, it will affect uh, most people actually. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure how many people know about this. Uh, but extensions, these web extensions, which exist for both uh, Firefox uh, and Chrome, uh, they use more or less the same standard. And the standard is this manifest in, in a way. Actually, whatever. Uh, and they have been using manifest version 2 for um, a really long time, like since 2012 or something. Uh, but now... Google is uh, introducing manifest version 3 and that will uh, mean a very big change to uh, how um, how ext what the extension how how extensions are built it will change uh, uh, what permissions they got and it will it will actually make some some quite uh, radical uh, changes to how how to build an extension and when manifest version 3 is um, is the only manifest because currently you can use both manifest version 3 and manifest version 2 um, and this is extremely recent it's just a couple of weeks maybe two weeks ago or something when they uh, when manifest version 3 was introduced to chrome with chrome version 88 which i actually have now on vivaldi not sure how other, like Brave, I'm not sure if they are uh, using Chromium 88 or whatever. But uh, uh, since ver Chrome version 88, you can uh, use uh, extensions with Manifest version 3. I'm not sure I know about any extensions that uses Manifest version 3 yet. Um, but you're also allo allowed to use... Um, Manifest version 2 extensions, of course, but this uh, will end in um, I don't know if they have, have it here Developers can update their extensions today to take advantage of these M MV3 features This will become mandatory as we phase out MV2 in the future uh, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure I have read somewhere in this uh, terrible uh, Chrome developers documentation thing here that um, a year from uh, um, the introduction of uh, Manifest version 3, uh, they will uh, deprecate Manifest version 2, or deprecate, they will remove it. So, a year from today, basically. Uh, and th this means that a lot, or almost all, if not all, extensions have to be re rewritten uh, or uh, modified quite a lot to to be able to work with manifest version 3 not sure I want to go into to the technical details exactly what what's uh, happening here and uh, um, but it will make to me 
it looks like it, it, it's a lot more difficult to write extensions because one of the important changes they are doing for uh, developers important is that you will not be allowed to, to uh, um, or they don't allow um, background JavaScript pages, which I guess we could see here something. Uh, this is VB4C, permissions, site access, okay, background page, yeah, whatever. All these extensions with Manifest version 2, they are divided in three parts. It's like background pages, content uh, pages, and then the pop-up pages. Uh, and if we go to a normal web page here, we can see vb4c it have its own little button here when i click that i get a pop-up and this is the pop-up page uh, the background page that as you can hear it runs in the background it's like a daemon uh, but a javascript daemon and the context page is uh, let's see if that works here no no of course not because yeah as you can see vb4c it's very very wonky at the moment but this is VB4C's context page. It's, it's the, the HTML and JavaScript that the extension injects uh, into a page. Uh, this will remain, so you can do the same thing here uh, with extensions. You can inject JavaScript into pages. Uh, you can, the pop-up, you can do that as well. But background pages, they want to change that completely here with manifest version 3. So no extensions have background pages. So no JavaScript daemons running in the background. Instead, you're supposed to use uh, something that's called uh, service workers, uh, which whatever, let's not get into it because it's, I find it very complicated and almost annoyingly uh, complex to to work with I, I know I, I'm not I'm not the smartest guy you know but I I'm also very much not a JavaScript uh, guy so, so I find this very weird actually but I guess one day I will just oh okay I get it and I I'm starting to get it a bit but it's it it's quite weird how they work but at the same time I also feel that this is a good uh, I don't think this is a bad change from Google here because it will mean that much less JavaScript will be running in the background uh, from your extensions. They they will not have that much uh, uh, bloat, bloated JavaScript and sometimes uh, bad JavaScript, you know, uh, and and that that is even worse. And uh, or and the worst part is like malicious uh, uh, JavaScript running in the background. You you don't want that, you know. And that is also uh, the reasoning from uh, Chrome that they don't uh, that they have found that uh, so, some of these extensions are used to to track users and send data and stuff like that. And and that's the the next. Uh, very important thing here is that they have changed how you are uh, allowed to do network requests from extensions and they it's much much stricter it will be with manifest version 3 so as it is now i can send the data and receive data as well from extensions more or less uh, however i want you know uh, but that will not be the case you are you have to use a, a specific uh, declarative net request api and and it's uh, you can do much less uh, stuff like that and that is also it, it's kind of good actually because that there are a lot of malicious extensions and bad extensions and that do unnecessary network requests and stuff like that so it's actually in one way it, I, I completely understand why they are doing this but the, at the same time there are like really really good extensions that that have uh, been using uh, the, the old way of, of doing uh, net requests for example the most famous example is uBlock origin there, there was uh, quite a lot of, of uh, controversy about this manifest version 3 when it was released uh, I don't know a, a year ago uh, the, the proposition was released and uh, um, the developers of, of, of um, uBlock Origin was uh, quite uh, crushed that they couldn't, uh, th it will not be possible. This, this extension will have to go. And uh, it, it, it's like, in one way, it looks like it, it, it kind of targets uh, ad blockers. And 
it's kind of weird since uh, Google is uh, uh, an ad selling company making making uh, it impossible for ad blockers to exist on in their browser or it's not weird at all but I I don't think this is uh, this is the reason they because it will be possible to to uh, create ad blockers like this it will be much more difficult but it will be possible I I, I truly believe that but you have to uh, they have to be rewritten and probably some things here with for example uBlock origin you can write like really uh, advanced rules and stuff like this I hope I don't have anything uh, embarrassing in this rule list here uh, and this is also something that will be very difficult uh, uh, to do I believe when uh, when they introduce this new manifest because that's the that's the next important part here is that you're not you can no longer evaluate the uh, uh, code which uh, uBlock origin does I at least think they do that they they like take this string uh, send it into the extension and the extension turns this uh, text string because that's what it is here you know and I can write any text I want here and and then it evaluates that. Uh, text and that will not be allowed here we can see JS is probably JavaScript and then it evaluates the JavaScript in here and and that is something that affects a lot of these more uh, uh, complicated extensions uh, that you're not allowed to, to evaluate stuff uh, also VB4C of course with um, uh, did we have it here this is another example this uh, uh, configuration file uh, that I also have as a local file on my file system. So this is just like a mirror of that local file. And actually when I change something on, in my local file, uh, it will change this stuff here. That's something that is impossible to do in manifest version three. And you can definitely not do things like I do here where I have some custom JavaScript uh, in this uh, configuration that gets evaluated and stuff like that. So yeah, as you can hear, uh, and when I realized this, I was like 100% sure that there is no point in sinking time into VB4C as it is now. It's, if you want something like this, you have to rewrite it from scratch, basically. Uh, and I actually started planning on doing that anyways, because I really, really, really like this feature of being able to send URLs to uh, my system. Uh, and I also started thinking about are there other things I would like to change with VB4C? There are quite a lot, actually, uh, I realized. One thing that I have realized is this uh, single key, like Vim-like, in quotation mark, uh, modal navigation thing for the browser. It, it's not suitable at all for a browser to have this single key uh, hotkeys, uh, in my opinion, because one reason is that many, 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 uh, or many, 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 but some web pages, for example, here, this uh, RSS reader I use sometimes. Uh, let's see if it works. There, it have its own built-in uh, uh, keyboard uh, hotkeys that you can use on just this web app or whatever you want to call it. Um, but this this just doesn't work, you know, when you have a have a single key uh, hotkey extension thingy running in the background uh, that intercepts these, and sometimes you even get double stuff on some pages, and it's super awkward. So, so what you have to do is um, either disable the extension for some specific web pages, and you kind of don't want to do that with VB4C since you use it for some core features like switching tabs and, and opening the URL bar and stuff like that. You know, you, you cannot, you, you can never really disable this, or at least you don't want to do, do that. So what I have ended up doing is disabling the hotkeys on, in the web apps instead. And these, these are everywhere, you know, on, on YouTube, on GitHub, on the, all, all of these uh, big uh, web app things, which of course are bloat and we shouldn't use them, but we do it anyways. You know how it is. And they get even, they, they just get crappier when, when you cannot use these single key uh, uh, hotkeys. So that's one reason. Another reason is that sometimes it just doesn't work. It, I have triggered VB4C when I'm trying to edit text in text bo input boxes on some web pages and stuff. That's probably something wrong in the code, you know, but 
weird corner cases like that can happen. It's very annoying. And sometimes, yeah, it's, it's just weird to have this single key, uh, key presses. And it's also not really needed, you know. It's not like in Vim, you, 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 uh, or in a text editor, you're constantly editing text and at your keyboard really all the time. You aren't really when you are using a browser. I, 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 I still use the mouse a lot. Uh, and it's not a big deal if I have to use a modifier key instead of a single key uh, in the browser. It, it, it's different from a text editor, very di different. Uh, in, in the text editor, I think it's completely fine. I think it's good. I, I, I use uh, like Vim uh, Vintage in Sublime, which we get back to because Sublime is uh, also on this list of things I want to uh, change in my life. Okay. Um, and this has actually been kind of annoying that I uh, have felt that I had to do this JavaScript extension thing. And it made it even worse when I realized I had to learn this service worker stuff. I, I actually did some practice. I full did some tutorial, did some course even, and read a lot of stuff about it. Uh, and I kind of know how it works, but it's, it's re I, I really don't enjoy doing this stuff. I really don't want to do it. Uh, so, and that has have led me to uh, not doing anything, actually. Uh, okay. Let, let's just uh, mention those other two things uh, quickly here. Because the other thing I would like to do uh, is uh, Sublime. And that's also, like, everything is coming together, uh, it feels like. Uh, we can see, we can find it here. Uh, Everyone who watches this channel know that I use Sublime and let's mute the audio and open this video here. Uh, I saw this on Lobsters actually that Odat Nerd have uh, put up a video. They, they are getting very close now to a stable release of uh, Sublime Text 4 in quotation marks. Uh, and I didn't know about this at all. Uh, I knew that they will release this Sublime Text 4 in quotation mark. Uh, reason I'm doing that is because it will not be called Sublime Text 4, it will be called Sublime Text and become a rolling release text editor, kind of. But as far as I understand here, uh, he, he mentions it extremely briefly in this video. But what I understand is that Sublime will change its license model. Uh, let's see, go here, sublimetext.com. Maybe we should close this guy. Sublime will change its uh, license mo model uh, model to a subscription uh, thing. It's not like you pay every week, as I understand. I, th I think you buy a three-year uh, license, meaning that you have to uh, uh, renew your license after three years have passed if you want more updates. You are free to use it, but you know, uh, I will definitely not do that. It, it's not like Sublime is bad, but I, I cannot do that, you know. <laughs> uh, but even before I saw this video, I have felt this, felt that I, I kind of want to switch text editor. And uh, I will do that. And now I I'm definitely will do that uh, when I saw this. And I'm not excited at all about this features in quotation marks uh, with Sublime Text 4. It, to me, it looks like nothing. Really, they have changed uh, the default color scheme to Mariana, <laughs> whatever. It's like, I guess there is a lot of good stuff, uh, good development put into it, but um, it have always felt weird that I am a Sublime <laughs> guy, you know, uh, and having this Linux channel and everything. So I want to change text editor. Uh, and that's another thing I will do. I will do it quite soon here. And, and I guess it, maybe it would be uh, reasonable to, to me to, to test out some, some, some text editors. Maybe make it like a six month uh, thing or something. Because I don't think it's, you cannot do like, Oh, I'm, I'm testing 10 obscure text editors in, in like two weeks. You have to, I feel like this is a thing that you really have to evaluate, uh, uh, before you just just dive into something. 
And I, I, ha I have an idea. I, I think I know where I will land, but I have, have actually not tested that editor more than a couple of hours. Uh, and I need to do some more testing before I, I set, settle on something. And then when I have done that, I will stay there uh, for a long time, just as I did with Sublime. I don't want to switch text editors. It's, uh, I really don't want to do that. It takes too much time and you waste so much time on configuring these stupid text editors. Um, so that's another thing I want to do. The third thing is I want to uh, make a fork out of Thunar, proper fork uh, with some, actually with some of these VB4C features, you know, with uh, an address bar and, and some, or address bar, but, but a, a much more keyboard uh, friendly version of uh, Thunar. I really want to do that. And I have, uh, as I mentioned, um, contributed some to Thunar, so I know the code base well enough to start uh, uh, tweaking it, you know. And I think I have some good IDs there, some unique IDs even in, in the file manager space. Uh, I, I, I don't know why no file manager focuses on, on that workflow, you know. Just steal the IDs from, from, from Ranger. Can't you see that people like to use a keyboard sometimes, you know? Whatever, that's the thing I really want to do. Uh, switching text editor, I kind of really want to do that as well. Doing this extension, that is like the most critical thing th since it, it doesn't work. And this, this annoys me like every day this VB4C has been an annoying me. But what happened a couple of days ago, uh, also on the all so excellent uh, news aggregator known as Lobsters, I saw, let's see if we can find it. Uh, 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 uh. There, Qt Browser version two is released. And uh, you know, Qt Browser is um, uh, kind of a cool browser. Uh, and it, it is this VB4C, Vim-like navigation stuff. It's built into the browser. It's really, that is uh, the browser. It, I think it's really cool, actually. But I don't use it. And I don't, I will not use it. I don't want to get into any of those, my, my reasoning there. Uh, because I, I really don't want to bash on Qt Browser. I think it's it's a really cool project. And, and uh, I encourage uh, everyone uh, trying it out. And I was also... Um, interested to see what, what uh, new features they added here to this uh, new major release. Um, and uh, yeah, it just looks cool, whatever, nice. Um, I hadn't uh, thought about Cube Browser at all in a long while. I almost thought it was uh, uh, abandoned, but I don't know why, but I just ha hadn't heard about it. I hadn't seen any discussion about it or anything. So I was really glad to see that this is a very alive and well project. Uh, and I looked at the README, and then I saw this um, section in the README with uh, similar projects. Uh, and this is really cool that they list like uh, competitors, uh, you could say, uh, to Qt Browser. For example, VimB, uh, Lua Kit. I tried this. It's very similar similar to uh, uh, Qt Browser, but but it's written in these languages instead of Python. Um, but it also lists uh, some uh, add-ons. For example, VB4C uh, here is a Chromium add-on. And then you have Firefox add-ons. You have some different ones. They, this only works for Firefox. But then it also listed these two or three here. I knew about surfing keys, but I didn't know about these two, Krabby and Linkins. And Linkins hints got me really intrigued because that, this is another thing I was thinking when I was uh, thinking about VB4C or a, a next version of that. And I, I actually realized that the only feature I really need, I don't need this address bar thing, whatever, you know. As you can see in this video, I've been using this without thinking about it really. This is built into Vivaldi, this uh, quick, uh, quick, uh, whatever, quick launch panel thing. F2 is the default. Uh, key binding for that. So you can use that instead, whatever. It's it's even better since you can browse bookmarks and stuff from that. You cannot do that here. Uh, and I came to the conclusion that the only only feature I actually need from VB4C is uh, the hinting of the links. You know, I press F, I get this. This is VB4C. Then I saw this, link hints. 
And I'm like, immediately, hinting only. That's so great. And it's also called link hints. It's not called Vimium, FF, Vim, Vixen. This is not Vim. It's like, I find it a bit cringe, actually, that, that they, oh, Vim. No, Vim. It's not Vim. This is not Vim. How is this Vim? Just because you use a keyboard, it's not Vim. <laughs> Vim tarts. Uh, so uh, I looked up this link hints extension here. Got this uh, little web page, um, and this is all it provides. Only these six uh, key bindings, and it only hints links. It's so great. It's 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 a very minimal uh, uh, extension in that that sense. Uh, And I, I continue to, to read here about the, how it works and stuff. And it, it had some unique IDs here uh, for, uh, for these uh, Vim-like extensions. Because the author of this uh, um, extension, Simon Liddell here, he, he was actually a contributor and uh, even maintainer of the old VimFX browser extension, which is another one of these uh, uh, things from 2013. So this guy has been in, in the extension uh, uh, <laughs> business for a long time, and especially the, the Vim layer overlay thing uh, thing for a long while. And uh, he ha have found a, a really neat way to keep track on of the clickable uh, elements of a page, which is completely different from at least VB4C and uh, I believe it's unique to this one, so it makes it much faster and also extremely more uh, intelligent in a way how it displays these hints. I don't know if you can see it here on YouTube. Let's try VB4C here. I press F. Yeah, I get some hints, but you see, it hints all kinds of stuff. Like, uh, I want to press the like button. What is that? I don't know if it's this or this, and can I even press the play button with this? JA. Yeah, it actually worked. Uh, but it's, I don't know, it's it's weird. But with uh, uh, Linkins, you get like really neat links. This is Linkins uh, hints here. It's much easier to see what's what. And not that much overlap, only displays clickable things. You can even press this uh, player in player uh, button there. J U. Look at this. Then so I can do so much more with just the keyboard with Linkins. Maybe this was a bad example since I actually could press the play button and stuff. But one thing that I know uh, that VB4C doesn't do is um, embedded YouTube uh, uh, things. So let's see, let's see, yeah, YTT. So I often uh, watch uh, YouTube videos from this RSS reader like this, you know, and just play them in the like this, and most of the time I bring them up here, and then on micro full screen, this is great, nice, hello. Uh, but I, I never been able to, to press these keys with VB4C. Whoa. Ah. <laughs> uh, I never been, yeah, now, yeah, this is what happened now, because I have uh, enabled keyboard shortcuts here now on, on this RSS reader uh, application. And when I try to press F now, it uh, executes that instead of showing the hints because uh, you never know if VB4C or the web app will have priority over the keyboard. You know, it's super awkward with these single key uh, uh, things. If you have ever used any of these extensions, you probably uh, know what I'm, I, I talk about here. So whatever, we cannot even test it here, but with VB4C, no problem at all to, uh, well, <laughs> no, it didn't work. Now it works uh, because this is such a complicated uh, application, this uh, uh, um, RSS reader. Let me turn off the, the, the collaboration, power user settings, disable shortcuts. Okay. And now doing the same thing, pressing F. You see, I get, I don't get this hint and I get, it's just weird, but it actually hints now in the iframe itself. 
but I don't think it will do that if, if the focus is on this frame. No, no, I don't get any hints at all. It's super weird uh, on, on complicated sites like this. Now I'm not sure what's happening because now it doesn't hint anything. There, you see, bleh, and this. Well, it's a lot of hints here as well. What, whatever, it, I'm, I'm, I'm really rambling now. Uh, but link hints here, it's so much leaner. No weird uh, uh, configuration file. This is a configuration file that you have to handwrite with uh, VB4C and it, it's really, really awkward to style this thing and stuff like that. Then you have uh, link hints here. This is the option page for that. You can just change these key bindings if you want. And these are all the commands. Uh, you can see them here. I think it looks like more than it actually is here. And another cool thing is that you can uh, toggle peak mode peak mode, and rotate hints here. So for, for example, and this is also great that you have this option page where you can actually test, uh, test the, the, the shortcut. You can see these are really hard to uh, see since they are overlapping. The links are so close. Then you can do this uh, shift tab to rotate them and then it, uh, yeah, you see it, it does this uh, thing. You can also do control, what is it now? Ah, control P. No, but that should work. Control P. Yeah, and then you get a peak mode. So if you cannot read uh, the links behind the, the hints, you can do that this like this and then toggle it again. So we added all, all of these small really really uh, uh, nice uh, improvements but it doesn't have a, a external url handler so i cannot uh, execute uh, uh, extension uh, or scripts uh, uh, on my file system like i could do with vb4c but when i saw this extension i i thought hey since this is so uh, uh, this does so much less than vb4c uh, it's probably not that difficult to figure out how to do this uh, uh, do do the stuff the URL handling stuff with uh, uh, this linkins thing here you can see all the features of vb4c instead it, it's like insane it's too too much and all of these vim like extensions are like this they have way too much features uh, Uh, so I actually cloned, uh, cloned the repository and I managed to add these features to uh, Linkins. Uh, but uh, the source code for Linkins is uh, actually not minimal at all. I, I'm not even sure it's uh, less lines of code than VB4C and it have like this gigantic uh, uh, node module <laughs> dependency tree here. Uh, I, I don't like JavaScript so much uh, at all, actually, but whatever. But uh, this doesn't mean that this is bad at all, because it's actually very, very well um, designed, this extension. Uh, the author, as I mentioned, he, he has been doing this since uh, 2013, at least. Uh, so it's uh, very nice, uh, nicely organized, this uh, uh, repository. It was super easy. It took me like 30 minutes to, to implement that uh, feature, sending stuff to, to an external uh, 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 command like that. Uh, because, uh, yeah, everything was organized so nice. But it's also uh, very modern JavaScript, I guess. And it, it, it was a bit weird to, to get it look nice here in the code. But I think th this is good enough what I got now. Uh, I also added, uh, uh, um, so you can do this, you can set this uh, URL handler stuff from here. Now, now you see uh, background URL handler command. Uh, I've set this to notify send. So if I press this URL handler uh, key here, I can select uh, this e hotel here, and then it pops up notify send. But if I would change this to, uh, for example, girl, which is my, the URL handler I like to use, then you can select Delta A. Now it opens in Girl, so you can it immediately works here. You can just change the the command you want to use. You can change the port where the server is running, uh, because I'm using the exact same uh, uh, Python server script that I used with uh, uh, VB4C. 
Uh, yeah, e exactly the same. I haven't changed that Python script whatsoever. So you can use the exact same script, but you can uh, do this. But I think I will, uh, because what I will do now is actually uh, upload this to, to GitHub on my own uh, fork here of uh, Linkins. And I will also add that Python script with the server. And I will change uh, one thing in, in that script because currently uh, um, in this one, there is like this feature to open a input box in a text external text editor. And I, I haven't added that feature and I don't want to do it either uh, I, because I, I realize I never ever use it anyways. I, I only use it for, for executing uh, these external commands. So I will remove that part from, from this Python server thing here and add that to the Linkins uh, repository of my fork. But another extremely cool thing with this uh, Linkins extension is that um, it's uh, browser agnostic. Uh, you, you write, you just need to write the code uh, for, you, you don't have to write two different uh, code bases. It, it compiles uh, two different versions of the extension, one for Chrome and one for Firefox. So. I haven't tested it on Firefox. I just installed Firefox actually. Maybe we could do that. Firefox. Man, it was a really long time since I used Firefox. Huh? Yeah, okay. Placed it in the correct. Feel snappy. I don't know. Am I a Firefox guy now? I don't know. This is good. Um, Add-ons. Some of these recommendations. Extensions. Manage extensions. Install add-on from file. Look at this. It just opens. Well, this is actually not it for Linkins, Dist Firefox, XPI, open. Okay. Or maybe I should have read that. Firefox Developer Edition has prevented this site from installing unverified add-ons. Uh, don't do that. Let me do it. What are my options if I want to use? Yes. Uh, Firefox, Firefox Developer Edition. About config. Search for signature required. Okay. About config. Yeah. Signature line packs. This one. True, false. Okay. Sorry for the fans. This uh, stupid computer is uh, falling apart, I believe. Add linkins. Yes. Hey, <laughs> it works, you know, it just works. Let's see if that uh, external URL handler works here now. Okay, I got it. Can I see this? There it is. Okay, go to the options page. This means uh, font is really weird here, but it's at least better than the original extension because that's another thing I changed. I changed uh, the font so it doesn't use like system UI, uh, which I hate. Uh, let's do this. Notify, send, and then select one of these links. Select Delta, L. Oh, it didn't work. Okay, I should actually look into this. Uh, Maybe we can BB4C, see if this one reacts at all if I do this. Uh, huh. It does get 
something pinged here. I pinged my 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 notify send. So it received this this thing here. Hmm. Yeah, I guess then we are very, very close to having this working. I should really look into that, why it doesn't work. Um, and then uh, it will work on Firefox as well. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, I also added this this thing here so I can yank the current page URL, meaning that, uh, yeah, it just entered that key binding. Now I yanked the URL to this page. That's something I do all the time, especially since I don't like to have the address bar visible, you know, so that's, that's really handy. And that's a feature I missed, uh, so I added that as well. And you can also execute this uh, mm -mm, external commands on the current URL with the Alt Shift S by default here. I don't know why it looks so weird here. Um. Yeah, but I should really look into this because something, it, it does send the URL to uh, BB4C here. But then for some reason, ah, now I know what, what it is. I know what it is. It's very easy. Uh, 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 because it does a test here to make it a little bit secure at least. It makes sure that uh, the headers starts with Chrome extension. And Firefox probably don't have that in its headers. So, uh, 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 if we do this. Print the headers here. I have no idea how this works, what, what this really is, but whatever. I think, let me reload this server. Or C server there. Go to pale moon. It says this is pale moon, but whatever. Ah, ah of course. It's kind of annoying because. Yeah, or why not just do this? Do this it should start the server because I have some special ports and stuff set up, so that that's was why there null it prints me null. Uh, but here. There it prints Chrome extension. Okay, so that's not good because I don't want to test if it's null or Chrome extension. Mm. But that is why this isn't working. You know what? It doesn't matter. We don't have to test for that because I also send my little special handshake here, secret password. <laughs> Super secret, uh, and that should be enough.
pass here, I guess. Okay, stop it there. Should still work now. Chrome, it opens. Girl, Firefox, it opens. Girl. Okay, okay. So now this works in uh, all browsers basically. Maybe even Microsoft Edge. I don't know. I have no idea if Edge uh, uses these, uh, if you can install from Chrome Web Store. I have no idea. Ah, no, it says here. You can also get the extension from Chrome Web Store. So I guess it works. Maybe we can just do this. I expect it. Yeah, developer mode. Low extensions from other stores. I'm not sure if I need that. Drop to install. Add extension. Okay, okay, it works in Microsoft Edge. How cool is that? It doesn't work in Pale Moon though, but pressing uh, Alt S F J. <laughs> hey, what did it do now? Now it printed Chrome extension. You see that? No, uh, yeah, and the, the, the menu appears in the window uh, title. Cool, cool, FJ. Hey! <laughs> okay, so this works, this extension works in all Chromium based browsers, in Firefox and Firefox based browsers, I, I believe. Um, and I will add that to my GitHub. I guess I could do it now, you know, because it's it, everything works here. Just have to modify this server script a bit here, but that's not not a big deal. Uh, yeah, or maybe I don't do it here now on camera. There, there are actually some more things I need to do, but I will do that. Uh, and my thought is uh, that I will just create two branches uh, uh, here. One that will be called uh, Chrome Chromium Compiled or Compiled for Chromium and one that will be called Compiled for Firefox. Uh, so those two branches are the ones you want to uh, clone. And then uh, you can, to install it in, in Chromium at least, you you open the extensions uh, guy here and select this load unpacked and then you can just select a, a, a folder or a directory with the, the source code for an extension unpacked so you don't even have to use this i could use this here in in vivaldi as well the crx file but i'm not sure if i want to add that to github i i, I don't know i will look into it maybe i create a release for it if that's possible and add the the actual extension files there i i, I don't know but i will add it here to my my uh, repository i wonder if um, Lidell have answered because i found that there there's something wrong with the build yeah look i got a heart from him Thank you, man. Thank you, Liddell. Uh, there seems to be something off. Uh, I get that there are two on Node.js 15, but not on Node.js 14. Look into this more once I get back to working on this extension again. I've been wanting to do a few tweaks for a while, but have ended up working on other so open source projects. Uh, my hope is to give this repo some love during this first year. You know what? I give you a heart as well. There's something off with the build script here. I I, I think I, I cannot fix it. I cannot fix it. It's some node JS thing. Something's wrong in one of the dependencies. This 
I hate I hate working with JavaScript, especially Node and all these crappy dependencies. It's like, but everything works. It just it builds everything. I just but it exits with this uh, uh, failure error failure. But it it managed to build everything before it fails. I think it's uh, uh, because what what's left to do is like building the home page and stuff or linking. So it's it it will not affect uh, the extension. Uh, and it fails in the CRX part here, which is when it creates this. But as we could see, it, it even works in Edge, so nothing is wrong with the actual build here. That's great news, Simon. And Simon Liddell here, by the way, he is a coder from uh, Stockholm City, Sweden. So this is also Swedish uh, uh, quality <laughs> all over. Um, Yeah, th this is a great extension that no one knows about, about except for uh, the great guys at um, Qt Browser. I think it's so great that they have this uh, little section with alternatives that you can test out if you uh, don't want to go full Qt. Uh, I actually never tried this uh, other one uh, which was mentioned here, Krabby. Uh, it looks quite interesting as well. Uh, at least in the description, but it's also kind of weird because it have a lot of Pokemon uh, references here, and I don't understand what what the point with this that is. But here, this is actually Kakaoon, Kakaoon, Kakaoon. <laughs> what a bad name for for a software, you know? It's like naming your your uh, your software i3 ass or something like that. It's so stupid. Uh, but this is based on Kakaune uh, editor and I don't know if you know what Kakaune is uh, but it is like uh, it is like Vim but it is uh, it's not like Vim at all. Uh, it have modal editor but it also have multiple selections so it's like uh, this this is this is actually a, an editor I will look into in my evaluation of text editors. I have tried it briefly a couple of times, but never it never really stuck on me and I, whatever. But I will give this, uh, definitely give this like a month or something because this might be exactly what I want. Uh, because I, 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 uh, I am a multi-selections guy and I'm also a fan of modal editing. And the thing is, these two doesn't work that well together, uh, at least not in Sublime, at least not in Vim. But this editor is built on the that concept that you should be able to you be able to use modal and multiple selections. And it, it, they have created their own language, so to speak. It's it's not like uh, just Vim and with multiple selections. It's it's like selections is uh, is the key key mode so to speak it's it, it's different and it's very interesting and i think this might be the right thing i i, I don't know and but and, and that crabby uh, extension here is um, inspired by that instead of vim whatever that means i haven't looked into this uh, but it looks to me that there is too much uh, features and pokemon uh, i i'm i'm very happy with this uh, linkings and it's also it's rock solid, this linkings. I haven't noticed any issues at all with it. Except one weird thing that the link here in this pop up, uh, when you click that, uh, or I fixed it now, so now it doesn't happen, I guess. But uh, when you click this link, it opened the home page in the pop up itself, <laughs> which was weird. Uh, that's the only like bug I found in it, but it's extremely uh, stable, snappy, and the, uh, also, since it's so such a well organized uh, uh, project here, as well organized as a JavaScript uh, gigantic uh, uh, dependency tree thing can be, you know, it also have like a testing suit and stuff like that. So, uh, and I, I I've used it myself a lot here when I because I don't know JavaScript at all. So it helped me a lot uh, finding errors and stuff when when I was doing this with this testing framework and. 
I'm very impressed by this. It's it, it's the best extension I've seen, uh, and like taking this really hardcore approach on on, on like stripping away everything if, except hints. That's genius, and I really hope it stays this way, uh, and that the features he adds are are no uh, no weird things. Okay, and you know what? Now I, I, I am done with this. I didn't have to build this and, and my time frame for this the VB4C, right, my own extension, that was like six months or something. I, I thought I would need to make something, yeah, a full-blown extension of that uh, the, with these types of features because I, I, I don't know anything about this stuff, you know, uh, really uh, developing JavaScript. And, and I really, also the fact that I didn't want to do it, it also makes it take a lot more time. When you're really passionate about something, you can just sacrifice a, a weekend uh, and uh, not sleeping at all and just 40 hours of crazy uh, pro code production. Uh, you don't want to do that when you don't want to do it, you know. So I'm, I'm actually very happy because of this, because I found this and it had all the features I wanted. It, it even the name, you know, Linkins, it feels, it almost feels like that's what I would like to call my, my, because I, I'm so annoyed by this uh, Vim, uh, we are Vimium, <laughs> Fire Vim Fox, you know, it's not Vim, it's just an extension, let's you use the keyboard a little bit more in the browser. But this is the best one, and no one knows about it, except me and the Hue browser guys. Um, yeah, and works on Firefox, Edge, Vivaldi. I have actually not tested it on Chrome, but I, I guess it works there as well. Not sure, I think I have Chromium installed at least. Yeah, whatever, we don't have to do that. It should be the same thing. Um, and now we know, you. I told you a bit about this. Uh, maybe that was news to some people about this manifest version 3 stuff here. Keep an eye on this because this, this will be a lot of... Uh, uh, it will be a hot topic uh, during this year. Uh, <laughs> If it, if it uh, can fit between all the other uh, real world hot topics, maybe, I don't know. Maybe this will be the hottest topic of them all. Uh, and I, I don't worry too much about this. Don't get, uh, don't get caught up in, in the drama about this uh, for, for two reasons. One is there's nothing we can do because Google have uh, just uh, said that this is what we will do and everyone will follow because everyone is Chrome, you know, uh, except Firefox. And if Firefox decides not to uh, uh, follow this, that will mean that, for example, Linkins here would only work in one of the browsers. I wonder if they will support the browser with 96% market share or, you know, so Firefox will also follow here, even if they haven't really said it uh, out loud, but uh, they have been quite vague, vague about this manifest version 3. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that Firefox will, will uh, uh, comply with these, uh, uh, this stuff as well. All in all, there's nothing we can do about it except using like Pale Moon or uh, uh, Serenity OS contribute to that browser, which is actually a very good idea using Pale Moon. Also a good idea, actually. It's not 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 bad, and that's that. What this will uh, end end with is probably a couple of more users will stop start using alternative uh, browsers, the few that actually exist, which is like Pale Moon. Um, and if you don't intend to do that, there's nothing you can do about this. So that's one reason. The other reason is that it isn't that big of a deal for everyone. O only people who are in this extension uh, business thing, they, they they will have to put in some a couple of hours here to fix their extensions. And some extensions will go away. Most of the ex extensions that will go away are bad extensions, like really bad. Some of them even evil. 
will uh, get dropped from the from the store because this will make it much easier for Google to audit uh, the extensions. Uh, seeing this, it's it's very hard to find this uh, uh, when every extension is allowed to do like these external uh, 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 net requests and stuff like that. And it, I think it will in the end we will just have we will have a lot fewer extensions, but the extensions will be better uh, and not consume that much. Uh, 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 computer power. And also, if Watson is watching this, you know, um, uh, um, what's it called? Task Manager? Yeah. Here, look at this. Vivaldi have this at least built in. I'm not sure if this is a Chrome or a Vivaldi thing, but here I can see how much memory each uh, tab and extension is using. Um, we can see, yeah, here, this got like 18 subframes and uses 60 megabyte is uh, VB4C. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Linkins uses more. No, 30 megabytes here. YouTube, one single tab, 150 megabyte. Interesting. Ublock Origin, 52 megabyte. Whatever. And I can kill these processes and stuff like that. So, because I watched a video uh, by Watson where he said this is the only reason he is using Firefox is that, that it have this feature. But uh, Vivaldi does as well. Whatever, whatever. Don't worry too much about this manifest version three. It pff, there's nothing we can do, and it is not that bad actually. Uh, it's sad that we will lose uBlock Origin, um, but uh, a lot of things will actually get better with this. Some things will get worse. Some thing, things will get better. There's nothing we can do. Don't worry about it. That's that's actually my take on this. Uh, stop using these stupid browsers altogether. Instead, instead of making like a U Google YouTube video with your uh, uh, Google Vivaldi browser and complain about uh, evil corporations uh, and write a little uh, uh, blog post in your uh, Microsoft Visual Studio Code text editor, you know. Stop, stop uh, LARPing, uh, um, go full gopher instead, if, if that's if, if that's really how you feel, but it, it isn't, you know. So that's, that's my take on this, uh, but it is kind of a weird, really aggressive, I, 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 I kind of wish they would have done this manifest in, in, phased it in, like first introduced this service workers, maybe a year later introduced this net requests and, and a year after that, the third thing here or whatever. It's like a lot at the same time. Uh, but I guess maybe that's, you know, Google, they are not like uh, uh, sub, sub uh, 100 IQ people. They have probably, uh, there's probably a reason for that as well. Because this will really phase out a lot of extensions. A lot of people just not, whatever, they will say, I, I don't care. I don't make any money whatsoever on my stupid extension here. It was cool to have a couple of thousand users back in 2016, you know, whatever. I don't care. I will not update my extension. Someone else can do it or not. I don't care. And they will just go away. And maybe that's exactly what Google wants, you know, to, to kind of clean, uh, clean house, uh, the web store a bit. And, and that's not, not a bad, bad thing either. Don't worry too much about it, but you will hear a lot of drama about this. Uh, whining, complaining, accusing, uh, uh, and stuff like that. We should never have gotten in this mess from, from, from the start. We shouldn't have started using Chrome. All of us are guilty to this. It, it's not, don't blame Google, blame yourself for, for uh, using Chrome. Uh, that's what I do. And um, so, some days I, I, I think I should go back to Pale Moon, but whatever, whatever. That's not part of my plan here. That will not happen this year if not something really weird happens with with uh, Vivaldi or something like that. Uh, I will focus on these uh, things, the text editor and uh, the file manager here. Uh, that will be that that's my plan for maybe the year, maybe the upcoming 6 months or something. But let's do the 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 journey of uh, Text editors. That's the next video. Let's do let's do Kakaunu now that we have had that open and everything here, uh, and take it from there. I want to test this, but I have I have a couple of more on my list. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, 
yeah, we, we take that when that comes. Thank you for watching, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.